Hi, this is Kat Besh, Director of Vietnam Animal Aid and Rescue. A, just kind of a quick update on um, on the rescue. <sighs> Shit's going down. That's the best way to explain it. And 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 it's not like it's completely unexpected either. I mean, I think I think after the like the raging shit shows of the past eight years, this is just par for the course, right? Um, you know, lacking veterinary resources, financial resources, human resources. Um, yeah, just like kind of the basic absence of support of all things people take for granted in the country I am from, and many that I have lived in. I think I think shit shows are like pretty baseline. Um so we have MRSA, which is an antibiotic <clears throat> resistant bacteria, um, in the chickens that we rescued recently, the two blind chickens. And I'm having trouble sort of understanding how it has manifested itself in the way that it has um in regards to the eye infections and things like that. So I I, I don't know enough about MRSA specifically how it presents in order to understand that right now. Um, <clears throat> so MRSA is, is a staphylococcus infection, <coughs> excuse me, that, um, that is antibiotic resistant. So you may have heard about this, like they call it a super bug, things like this. And this has been, um, this has been more prevalent in, in actually human hospitals, um, nursing homes, things like this, um, particularly for people that are immune compromised, um, HIV, um, and uh, yeah, a lot of elderly, um, you know, people that just don't have particularly strong immune systems are more, are, are more susceptible to it. Um, you know, or open wounds, things like this. There's a lot of ways that you can get it. Um, and a lot of times when you go in for surgeries in, in hospitals, they test you for it. Um, yeah, because it's a danger. It's an issue. Um, so yeah, we've we've been in lockdown for such a long time since we've had the chickens. Since we picked up those chickens, um, they that we have been in lockdown, right? So we have not been able to bring them to the vets until this weekend. Um, borders have been closed between Hoi An and Da Nang, and um, if you're not familiar with the area, that's like thirty kilometers apart. So it's just that Da Nang is a separate. Um, like entity, legal entity, it is a city, and we're in Wangnam province. Hoi An is um, is over the border, over the Da Nang city borders into Wangnam province. And so um, they have, you know, Da Nang city had been locked down and people were unable to travel in and out and were mostly stuck inside their houses in strict lockdown. And that has been easing somewhat. Um, vaccinations have just really gone through the roof at this point there is a really a much higher um, vaccination rate and so they've been able to to lighten some of the restrictions that meant that we could do a handover of the chickens over the border between hired cars so our staff couldn't go and um, but they were able to get to the clinic which meant that they were finally you know they said they weren't able to get the pathology the, the pathology for a while on it and then we finally, I guess, somebody figured out where they could send it to a lab in Da Nang to get the bacterial culture because they, the chickens had returned from the vet and they, cause they had changed antibiotics and things were getting worse. So, so I was like, somebody has got to fucking just find out what the, what the bacteria is. We've got to specifically identify it. Um, we were not able to do so in Hoi An. They would not allow us to do that. Um, or they didn't have the testing facilities. I don't even remember. It's such a shit show there anyway. Um, getting lab work done in Hoi An, which we have had to do through the human hospital before is just such a ridiculous nightmare. And frankly, I think the quality of it is such crap that it kind of doesn't really matter anyway. Um, but but that's not the point. We can't even get x-rays in Hoi An. Yay, we run an animal shelter at a place we can't get x-rays. Fucking brilliant. Um, I mean, when we started it, we couldn't buy cat food in the city or dog collars. We had to literally drive to Da Nang or order it. So... Things have improved significantly, but not in the way of testing laboratories. So basically we hadn't been able to get any sort of information about it. And we were just, we had just been, you know, shocking or, or, or shotgunning the, their treatment with different antibiotics and things and um, just kind of doing the best that we could, flushing it. We were talking to avian specialists and um, in different countries and the international vets in Da Nang who frankly could give a shit where they live or die because they would eat any of them anyway. Um, you know, from an organization that doesn't speak out about any animal that isn't fluffy. 
Um, not the point. Um, yeah, I mean, they just didn't really know anything about it, no matter how hard they tried. I mean, like, unfortunately, whether you care about chickens or not, in veterinary school, you're likely not going to learn anything about them other than reproduction and slaughter. Um, there's not a lot of information about how we heal them because people don't. 60 billion of them are killed every single fucking year because people think they are an ingredient, not a sentient being. So as a chicken mom, I find this particularly offensive, but that's not the point. Um, me being offended hasn't really seemed to change much of anything. In fact, it's really the veterinary industry itself that is generally perpetuating this and the vets work for um, producers and consumers. They don't, they don't, they work for the government. They don't work for people that care about animals because frankly, they don't give a shit either. Um, everybody's in it for a paycheck. You know, obviously there are vets that care, but there's like 12. So, and they're all on the Vegan Veterinary Network on Facebook. Love that group. You guys are the, like one of the few reasons why I don't jump off a cliff. Love you. But, um, but yeah, so basically the test came back and they are MRSA positive. This is a bigger disaster than it sounds like, aside from the fact that they immediately have to be euthanized and they have to, we have to burn their bodies, which we will do off site. Um, it's also like seven o'clock tonight in Vietnam at the moment. Um, it's daytime here where I am in Scotland. I can't do anything about it. Um, I'm just sitting here panicking and trying not to sob hysterically because these chickens, which I had very much hoped to meet when I got back to Vietnam, if they ever let me into the country, um, these animals, which we have done so much research on and done everything we can to make them better so that they could live an amazing life. We even just started their, building their coop, which was going to be ready Monday. Um, and now we have to euthanize them. So our staff that have been lovingly caring for these two babies, Merlin and Maverick, um, have to watch them die now and burn their bodies. Um, and that's terrifying and horrible. And while I personally have seen so much death in the eight years that I have done this job, so much suffering, I've put animals to sleep myself. Animals that I have loved for years and years and years, I've had to put to sleep myself, um, and bury them. And many that we couldn't save. I understand what they're going through is new to them at the shelter and it's not normal. However normal it may be to me. And um, normal doesn't mean it's not traumatic. Um, it will always be traumatic. Um, every life lost matters. Um, and I hate that they have to go through this. I wouldn't give my experiences in the past eight years to my worst enemy, much less anybody I cared about who was responsible for taking care of the only things on the planet I even love, which are the animals at that rescue. So this sucks. And this is going to suck for them for a long time. So what happens aside from the chickens when you have MRSA on site? MRSA can live in the environment. Um, and we have had, while they have been in isolation, um, and the protocols I'm, I hope have been followed as closely as possible for people that have never done it before, um, who have learned about isolation protocol basically from YouTube, from the internet, which frankly, I was lucky not to have to go through that. I've been doing this for decades. Um, in my experience working with animals, whether it was horses that had been imported and were quarantined or going to competitions and things like this or um, through veterinarians or rescues and having to, to learn about um, isolation protocol. But I learned it from vets and people that have been doing it for decades before me. So I had that experience and they did not. So I have no doubt that they did the best that they could, but there is always a risk, even if we are doing the best that we could and have experience. So they were in the center stall of the barn, which means that they, um, 
the pigs were on either side. And while they were on, they were in wired kennels and they had bedding and then their bedding was separate. Uh, none of the bedding was used for other animals and or had contact with the other animals. It was, and it was bleached heavily when it was washed. I still, you know, it, it is concerning, um, you know, that any of that bacteria could still be alive for, you know, hours, days, months um, in, in the environment. Um, so, you know, I mean, there's always, there's always some potential for crossover and any sort of biohazard situation, um, when that facility, when the isolation unit is not entirely off site, uh, and that, and within a perfectly sterile environment of which that, I mean, that's just really unbelievably fucking hard to even consider where we are, you know? I mean, even when we had the veterinary clinic, that was just such like a pipe dream. No matter how hard we tried, there is just limits to how, without having a purpose-built facility, there's a limit to how, how sterile anything can be. Even with like well-trained staff who have extensive experience in in isolation protocols um yeah so this is an issue so the pigs were in either side never had contact with the chickens or any of the materials used but they're in an untreated wood barn and it makes me really nervous and i'm in the like mindset that we need to burn it to the ground and move off that properly entirely property entirely so at the moment we were looking they are having to move the chicken or the pigs off the out of the barn. This is a little more complicated than it sounds. So Julian and Lola hate each other. They're not friends. They're like mortal enemies. Um, mostly it's because Lola still has not been spayed because we obviously don't have any vets in Vietnam that are capable of it. They need um, gas anesthesia, which only recently has become available. And those vets don't know how to spay a pig anyway, nor do they have the facilities. So it's just a shit show. She's not spayed. We're doing the best we can with what we have. And it's a nightmare. So we're trying to get our new French vet to to tr train on pig space and he will be coming, but that's not the point. The point is Lola's blind and she's been living on that property for four years in the same exact place. So if you work with blind animals, you understand why this is sort of a, a thing, you know, like to have a very familiar environment. So moving her is not all that much fun. She's a little bit of a shy pig. We love her very much and she, she does enjoy love and she loves her tummy rubs and thigh rubs particularly. It's a little bit bizarre and uncomfortable, but anyway, she's very loving. Um, but things like this really, really upset her. So she has to get off site or off, off her like familiar property into the front pen. We have two pens, um, which we, which are completely closed off from the dogs. Um, and which they can move the pigs into. So Lola is going to move into one of the one of the pens, and Julian will be out in the in the area. But either way, we do not want them to have any contact with the barn. My concern is mostly because Lola's a really messy eater, and she has rats that come in and like pick up her little bits. This is just kind. Of, it's Vietnam. Come on. I mean, like, frankly, we had rats in every barn I've ever been in, in any country I have ever lived in. I've been in a lot of barns on a lot of properties, and rats are just like part of that life um so my concern is the rats at this point that they move between the two stalls um and that scares the shit out of me um that the pigs would get it um or any of the other animals for that matter or our senior chickens or whatever so we can't even have lola with the chickens who are in the cat area like just the shit show is incredible so anyway we're looking for off-site properties to move them to but at this very moment they are moving lola our blind pig into a new situation she's shitting her little pants and i am really really trying not to think about my little princess being um in any way upset but this is part of life working with animals that sometimes you have to do things that are super super unpleasant for them and they don't understand what's going on and you understand and can't explain it to them and they just have to have a really shitty day so i've exported a lot of animals and this is the mindset i have it's gonna suck today on the other side it's gonna be amazing what do you want me to do that's how it goes trust me on this kid so um 
so that's what's going on right now and it's an absolute shit show so we're going to need an enormous amount of funding to to manage what has ultimately become a major biohazard or biosecurity situation um on the property and it is a threat to our staff it is a threat to our other animals and we are doing the best we can to learn about this the this bacteria antibiotic resistant bacteria mrsa as quickly as possible because this is the last thing we expected you know i mean like i'm always really strict about protocol for quarantine and isolation because like everybody's diseased in vietnam every animal that we have gotten has had something and it is always like you just learn to expect like every dog i see on the street i'm just like that one's probably got parvo that one's probably got ct or canine transmissible venereal tumors ctvt this one's got blah 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 this one's got leptospirosis this one's got brucelliosis this one's got erlichia whatever you know like everybody to me looks like a walking disease so that's just based on my experience um and and unfortunately when you have new staff they haven't had years and years and years and years of having this drilled into their little brains they haven't had they haven't seen just thousands of animals die from really preventable things and so like in their heads they're not they don't look at everything as a potential um risk and and that's something that comes with case experience you know i mean that's just that's just how this goes um but we're doing our best and they're going to learn really quickly and they are brilliant and wonderful and extremely on top of shit. And I have all the faith in the world and their ability to manage this. Um, but but it's scary and we need your support. Um, we have less than $100 in both of our accounts. It's not like we have money to handle any of this. And, you know, we haven't been able, you know, I, I had posted something about needing $2,000 to be able to pay all of our expenses. We've got like 300 out of that 2000. Um, we had had to spend a lot to go to Glasgow for the vegan festival in my typical <laughs> delusional optimism that um that it would matter and that we would be able to fund it based on uh based on me being charming and chit chatty and having really great conversations with people and that they would be willing to help us in some way and unfortunately they haven't yet except for just a, a few people and I'm very grateful to all three of those people. Um, but it has it has been a challenge and very upsetting for me personally to be to feel like it all of this is my fault because I continue to take financial risks in fundraising. And and I don't think I am wrong in this, um, that we do need to have more exposure in countries that are interested in these issues and financially capable of contributing to their solution. Um, I do not believe that is wrong. That is, a, that is the same approach that Animals Asia takes, that WWF, all of these organizations that were there, all of them are still on the same plane. They just have a lot more money to burn in fundraising than we ever will. So for us, it was a massive risk. For them, it was just what they do. Um, but either way, we're really financially in a shitty situation. And, and that sucks. That sucks. That sucks. And this is a disease that is, um, you know, MRSA is a result of animal agriculture. Direct result of animal agriculture. And the overuse of antibiotics that are vital to the animal agricultural industry in order to produce the number of animals that they turn into corpses that you all unnecessarily shove in your fat little faces. So I say you all, probably not the people that are watching this video, but let's get real. So, so yeah, it's, um, you know, they were the same corpses I put into my face. I've been a part of this, you know, I, I participated in this shit for 33 years. I am as much to blame for MRSA as anybody else, um, out there right now, just because I've been vegan for eight and a half years doesn't make me not part of the problem for many of those before that. So this is a really big issue and I really hope people can learn a little bit more about what superbugs are, why they are a threat to all of humanity, um, and why we need to stop 
supporting animal agriculture and stop the flaming fucking bullshit lies that the animal welfare industry keeps selling you so that they can keep the donors coming in from the meat industry so that they can keep animal eating animal lovers paying their bills and ultimately lying to the public about the fact that you can continue to harm exploit murder certain species humanely with a clear conscience in spite of the fact that these antibiotic resistant bacteria exist solely because of these practices. So get your shit together, animal welfare organizations. Speak up, stop being lying little assholes. The public can handle the truth. Thanks.